Hey guys, welcome back to American Redneck. Today we're going to be working on a 2005 Jeep Grand Chariot <laughs> Jeep Grand Chariot Laredo. Um, so what's going on is there's a recall on the switch, and if you've already had a recall done, and is a couple years later has done it again, that's what's happening to mine. So basically. When I'm sitting on the weekends, on Saturdays, we go to the dump, and as we're sitting on the side of the road waiting to get into the dump, the whole dashboard blinks and blurps and does all, makes all kinds of noise, uh, sort of like aliens coming down. So if you've ever had aliens coming down after you and you like do all this weird stuff, that's what it does. So basically what it is, is a key switch. So we go in here, it doesn't actually replace the key itself. Um, it's just the electrical part here and what happens is when you put it in there's a little switch a uh, little turny new doodad knobby thing down inside there and that's what activates all the electronics in there so if you're oh what else is doing it's the fan only works on high on mine uh, but if I put it on any other one and it goes out if I wiggle my key comes on push it in whatever um, same thing with when the, the dash does all the, all the flashies. If you push a key in all the way and just wiggle it, and if it, everything starts working again, then you let go of your key and it stops. Basically, it's this guy here. So, let's go get the Jeep, bring it in the garage, and we'll get to replacing it. Let me show you the dash real quick. So this is where we're going to be working on it. It's inside of here. Um, I'm going to turn it on. And currently it's not going to do it. But the this light here will stay on. And the code is some UL1 or 1UL something. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so by replacing that, that light should go out as well. So let's get you all set up and we will uh, take this dash apart. Before we do any work with electronics in a vehicle, uh, we're going to take off the negative. So first things first, we're going to take this and uh, pop this off. I'll zoom you in, how's that? The other way dude. So this here, this just um, this whole thing comes right out. It just pops right off. Now some vehicles do, some don't. This one here, I can tell there's another one. So this comes right up here. It just pulls right out there. And I have another one right here. Let me show you. So you have these two here, you have one there, and you have one up over there. And on the top, there's one right here. Right there. So I'm just gotta grab that one out. So this is right here is where we took out that thing. And right here there's a nub that's going up. So we just need to push push it down so that, can you see? No? You need to push this down uh, so we can pop that out. So just push the back of it down. Not on that nub, but on the back of the uh, switch. So we just pull it down in the back. All right, let's just say that's not the easiest freaking thing to get out. Um, so it's right here, this whole unit. So the way that I did it is 
I unplugged the plug from the top because the wire is really short. As you can see here, you have this red knob. It's usually pushed in. Just pull that out and that should just slide right off and then you can come down with it. I have more wires on this one. But, uh, let's see, and I got this doohickey over here. Basically, I'm just replacing this part here. So, I'm just gonna get, there's just one little bolt right here. I'm gonna take that out, and this thing would slide right off. Let me go grab that. So the uh, the two that hold it on up top, well, the three, this one here, and, and two in the front, those are T20s, hex nut doohickey thing, one of these, and this is a T10. So grabbing the other one, I did notice that if I can get this in, in this shot, right here, there's a nub, and you need to take take those off and just push them in; they'll pop right out. It pops off that easy. Woohoo! This is the old one that came out. This is the new one. So I'm going to turn this one, the new one to the position that that one's in. There. Now they're both exactly the same. So when I put them back on, they'll go on, it'll go on easier. And then here's these two tabs. Hopefully you can see them. These are the ones you need to push in. So you don't want to break those. Just clicks right in. So what I'm going to do is where this wire is wicked short. Is I'm going to put it all back up inside there. Um, and then I'll put that wire on. So it does go in a lot easier than it came out. Um, but I got the two nubs right there. Um, of course, I didn't put the T10 in. Friggin' A. We're right back. Alright, so don't forget to put the T10 in. Uh. There we go. So then don't forget to plug the wire back in. Should be pretty accessible. Just click it up, make sure you plug it, pushing that uh, red nubby thing so it doesn't come back out. Um, yours might be yellow. So that's it. It's all in there. Let's put it back together and start it up. To get the battery all plugged in, this is the moment of truth. It's always fun. You leaned on the blinker, you idiot. Alright, start her up. Now you can see my engine light's out now. Uh, so it's just the thing there. Um, that's the seat belt. That's low fuel. The wife likes to keep it on empty. Runs better, I guess. <laughs> so, um, I guess the true test is later on when we go to the dump. Um, if there's nothing at the end of this or whatever, let's just say it works. Perfect. That way, something. So, um, thanks for watching. What I'm going to do right now, though, is if you want to stick around, I am going to just do a quick synopsis of everything give you my thoughts on doing this uh, and then after that I'm gonna take that other switch apart just to take a look at it you can stick around if you want basically this whole job took me including filming um, maybe maybe an hour 
So if you want to save yourself an hour um, at the dealership, uh, they charge, I don't know how much they charge for that, but um, for that piece that I put in there, but it's about an hour's worth of work. So they, you know, whatever they charge, hundred dollars an hour, one fifty, wherever you're located. So that's where most of your money's going to go to. I actually bought this piece here um, for thirty bucks. So it's thirty dollars to fix this issue. So to do this entire job, you just took uh, some needle nose pliers. Uh, you can use whatever you have, uh, just a regular screwdriver, just so I can pry things um, out, um, like that key where the key is. And then I have a T10 and then a T20. Oh, and of course this. This was a 10 millimeter to take that off. Sorry. <laughs> so I would have to say, we're gonna scale this from a one to 10. Um, to take everything apart, I would have to say that was one being the hardest. No, one being the easiest. Let's do that. 10 being the hardest. Taking everything apart, it was a simple one. Those are very easy to do. Now taking that key switch out, I would have to say that's a good eight, at least it's a hot eight on it uh, to take that out and putting it back in maybe a six. Um, but like I said, I just unplugged that wire because the wire wasn't really long enough and that was it. So that's that. Um, so let's take this switch apart and we'll just see what it looks like. Just cause we can. Bear back. All right, so I get this off. This basically takes, this is a T8, it's the smallest one I have, it doesn't fit, so it's either going to be a T6 or a T7, um, where this is just for fun and games and show you what it looks like inside to figure out why it's not working, then I just ripped it apart. <laughs> How's that? Uh, and then there's some clamps here to take the whole thing off, to take the top off here. And of course that one is still giving me little issues. So here's the part that the key goes into, and then it turns the switchy switch. And as you can see, it's got goop in there. This here is, it looks like nasty stuff, but it's not. It's actually uh, grease. Let's see if we can turn this. Well, <laughs> it's spring loaded, don't take it apart. <laughs> is worn down um, it's just colored there so I'm wondering if this part here is uh, what's failing on them but that's it um, all this plastic and a little bit of and some springs uh, like I said this one here cost me about 30 bucks um, it's standard I don't know professional quality and the part is right here if you can see that this US 521 and then over here it says M19248 so just in case you're looking for the part but that's it it is spring loaded the good thing of it is is I have a spring here um, to go with something else there was another spring I don't know where it went I don't know if that was it or not it could have been but that's it. So anyways, this was another episode of American Redneck. We got this working again. Um, and blah, 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 blah. So, thanks for watching. If you like my videos, even if you don't, just go ahead and comment something. <laughs> something, yeah, because I'm a Mena. So sometimes my whatnot is whatnot. Um, so yeah, I would love it if you just subscribe to me. Hit that bell notification. And just put a comment. Let me know if this has helped you out, uh, if you saved your money, if you get ticked off when you were doing it. Uh, I did. I edited that out. You're not going to see that. But uh, thanks again for watching American Redneck, and we will see you on the next thing that I do. All right? Okay. No, you know, you can, you don't, you can turn it off now. Oh, yes. Only two scratches. Not bad.